Good morning, it's Alexa again with another dev stream Q&A for you. There's a bunch of interesting things in this one. It's not as crazy as the last one, I think, but still there's a few interesting things he said, especially also because something he said last week, which is a little bit different this week. So we're going to look over this in a second. And yeah, you liked the last one very much. So I thought I'd make one of these every week. So you guys get an idea of what's going on with last epoch and what my thoughts are on this. So make sure you like and subscribe to never miss any one of these and any one of my build guides and beginner guides in general. And now let's just dive right into what he has to say about the echoes. Um, but yes, <laughs> back to the actual question you asked. Yes, um, we do plan on, on adding in more things to make um, echo runs more uh, exciting and interesting and fun. Um, it's one of those things that as we release cycles and introduce new mechanics, uh, that'll, that'll get woven into it. Um, so yeah, the uh, Exiled Mages are the, the first of many of that style of mechanic that will show up in Model of Echoes. Um, personally, I'd really like to see indications on the like map level, on the, on the, uh, the timeline level that says like, oh, this Echo has, this Echo is being um, like... There's, there's an exiled mage in this echo. Oh, there's a secret mechanic too in this echo. <laughs> and that way you know you can like actively look for it and find it and like still have them be potential to show up randomly. Um, but if you are like, if you go into one that, that says like it's here, it's guaranteed and you can hunt for it. So I, I'd really like to see that personally. So echoes will be getting updates in mechanics so some mechanics will be added to so it's not just gonna straight killing mobs every time like it is right now which gets a little bit stale over time doesn't it so they will add some mechanics for example you get some different objectives like for example the um the monolith echoes the free ones you have to do it with the boss right they have some sort of objectives so i guess they will be adding more like that into the game into the regular echoes and also because he likes it a lot that you can actually see in the echoes above, like before you go into them, what is in that echo, like you said, an exact mage or anything else. That would be lovely to have this as well. So you can actually choose before, not just by XP or what kind of items you get, but also what will you be facing in that echo. For example, also arena runs if you don't like them, because I know many don't like them at all. <laughs> all right. Any updates on we are seeing a shaman rework? Um, th there are no major skill change rework overhauls for Shaman coming next patch, I can tell you that for certain. You know, like, we're, 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 t we're touching things here and there, we're making changes where we can, we're doing re, 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 re like, balancing of stuff, but, like, major reworks are not on the table for 1.1. One. So I guess there was a misunderstanding last time, because last time someone asked if there is some love getting put into shaman and forge guard and he said yeah we, we didn't forget about shaman or forge guard at all there will be something coming for 1.1 and now he says there is no reworks or even skills he also said in another iteration that there will be no new skills in 1.1 so i guess what he meant this sort of drops our expectations a little but i guess what he meant was the existing skills for shaman or even forge guard or any any class will get an update, like they will be sort of tuned up in the case of Shaman, I guess, but you will not have any new skills. So I guess the existing builds might just get better. I guess that's sort of the idea, which is cool, I guess. So you can play your builds. Finally, they are viable and actually do some damage, maybe even late game. But on the other hand, maybe a little bit of some, some new skills would have been nice as well. Maybe one or two dished into that. I don't know. But at least we get a, a, a tuning for the for the shaman as well. Or he, he said a lot of passives were touched, so I guess a lot of classes will go up and down in in power. I guess the acolyte will definitely come down a little bit, definitely because ward will be nerfed. But maybe shaman can finally at least play with us. But there is a really different um, different understanding because last time it really sounded like there is a lot happening to shaman. This time it's more like okay, we're just gonna dial up the numbers a little. Next question on topic of minions. It's a minion stream. Let's do this. Do you think the dot damage 
tools, beams, etc. they take is on the right level, or are players meant to constantly use the attack move button more? Um, I think that there is a, uh, uh, a corruption point where, um, all balances out the window. <laughs> I think that, in general, the amount of damage they take from dot areas is fantastic. Um, and once you get into, uh, you know, like, absurd corruption levels, it, it doesn't... The, the, the scaling rates of the damage versus the damage reduction and health pools of minions doesn't play nice, and you end up with these death pools for minions. This is an interesting addition I wanted to mention here because, I mean, I guess you understand this yourself. It's not really crazy. But what my thought about this is why I bring this into this video is basically the idea, if you, if you know the well, when you go high into corruption, there are these damageable time pools, like the poison pools that some enemies create. And your minions die in that pretty much instantly. Right? These are death pools is what they what they call up, what they call it. And this is because when you get into very high corruption, all the balancing sort of flows out the window, as he said, because they didn't balance the game around 2,000 or even 1,000 corruption. It's balanced around up to 300. He said it last stream that 300 corruption is sort of where all the content ends. So this is the highest they planned initially. Maybe even up to 500 corruption. But this is sort of after that, all the balancing is out the window. And they will also from my understanding, not balance the game around that. From what I've heard, because he said before, that any build that can go up to that high of a corruption is using some sort of bug or something that is not intended, that if anything, they will bring down the possibility to even go that high in corruption unless you find, again, another bug, right? So the game, I think, is balanced around Empower More Lives, which is 100 corruption, up to like 300, maybe 500 corruption. That's sort of the balancing. Anything higher than that, you are into, yeah, into un unclear waters where you don't know what's happening and your minions will just continue to die in these death pools because... And it makes sense in my eyes, you wouldn't want to balance the game around that high of a corruption because most players will never get there. It's really just a select few, few, that, few that put that much time into the grind to get that high up in corruption because it's a lot of time you have to, to get it to even 2k corruption or even higher. Putting into the game, grinding these echoes. So um, I like this. I like this take because after all, as much as you guys might like to be competitive and get the highest corruption and test your build in the in the highest echelon of what's possible, that's cool. Go with it by all means. But they have to balance the game around the sort of casual player, which is, for example, me also. I mean, I play a lot, but from what I do, I make builds. I try builds. I test them at around 100 to 200 corruption, and then I couldn't be bothered. I try a new build. And if you think about most people, that's usually what they do. There are very few people really that go that high in corruption. Some streamers, of course, do it also, or some content creators, um, because it helps with you know, finding the video and getting eyes on the build. But generally, the idea is to not go that high in corruption. And so this was more about corruption, this whole this whole section, I think. Well, this was what I got from it. More than the dev pools, they will stay. And... Yeah, he said also before, if you go to 300 or 350 corruption, someone asked, uh, your build is good. It's done, right? You did it. You made a great build. You've, it's done. You're fine. You don't need to push any harder. If you want to, you can do it. But I guess it will also be adding more endgame content for people who are bored after 300 corruption because difficulty isn't high enough. And they might even adjust that as well. Any cool new uniques for classes expected in the next cycle? Um, yeah, there's there's always new new, new uniques are um, one of I think the easiest and most interesting ways to spice up a class, um, both from a design perspective and a development perspective. Um, I think there's there's a lot of room for you know like like quick wins as we like to say on on for unique items. Yeah, he keeps rambling about uh, the, the quick wins there, and so I'm going to cut it off here. Basically, he's saying that this is very easy for them to do, to make new uniques, and they, this is the quick win because new, new uniques, that's a tough one, tough term to say, um, give a lot of value to the game fast because you can create builds around it, you can engage people with it, they have fun with it, but it's not difficult to do. That's the idea. But I just like that even in 1.1, we will already be getting new uniques, 
that's very lovely and it's unique it's not just one or two it sounded like from what he said um that it's not like many it's not crazy but there will be a few for sure so i'm guessing like five to ten new uniques we can play around with for the classes so that's going to be great for for new builds just just a short one but i like this to to give you the addition with that all right in regards to cycles will it be an end game thing only or will it be added to from the very start of the game for everyone to enjoy from level one. Um, well, so this cycle, the um, primary mechanic is a pinnacle boss system. Uh, and um, so that's gonna be a, a pretty end game specific thing. There are elements of it that do start earlier. Like it's not just a, once you finished everything else, this starts type thing. So like there's there's a lead up and I, I don't, <laughs> don't want to go into, into deep on it, but like, there's there's stuff that happens before the very end and and such, but the focus is on the pinnacle boss system at the end. Like that's that's the that's what so it's all building up towards. So yeah, a little bit more detail on the pinnacle boss system that is coming. And from what he said throughout the entire stream, this is the main goal they really have for 1.1, the pinnacle bosses. And it's apparently a whole system. I don't know what that looks like. We have no intel on that. But apparently, it's not just a few more bosses. Um, in the echoes or whatever it's really a whole system so i guess there is some sort of build up you have to play through or even with some law maybe and so so this sounds nice it's new content it's great and but it is definitely end game so keep your end game builds ready for it and um sadly we don't have more he also said there hasn't been a leak in a while because he's been asked about the league and he said yeah that's right so for next stream next week he's going to try to get someone to um, also, some information he can actually leak a little bit early about something. Maybe it's about the pinnacle bosses. Maybe it isn't. But also, from what I got from the whole stream and what he said, it's mostly really the pinnacle boss system. There isn't much more coming than that in new content because they're also looking into bug fixing a lot and um, balancing. So don't expect too much new content in this 1.1. Uh, I, get, I don't know how much time the pinnacle bosses will take up. We don't know anything about it. Maybe it's enough for us. But it's not going to be like uh, new masteries, new classes, pinnacle boss system, new, new uniques, like 20 of them, and set item rework and all that. That's not going to happen, right? So it's mostly pinnacle boss system, a little bit of a passive update for the mo classes to bring the balancing up to par and bug fixes. But it seems like that would be mostly it. We've heard a lot about a lot of things like the set item rework, um, and even new masteries, which will come first, but not with 1.1 for sure. Most likely a lot later. Uh, will we be, will we see some sort of system for still skills after hitting level 20? I hope I soon, I hope, um, uh, we are, <laughs> we are aware of a, a little bit of a, engagement drop off that happens with skills uh mid campaign when they when they they hit mid, mid late late campaign um when they're all hitting 20 uh and then you get into monoliths and you kind of just like got your points um and the the oh, got lucky there he lost his fault here because he has to ah! fight that um, oh <laughs> i'm gonna keep it in don't, don't, just watch him. <laughs> Pick those up for me, die. That's when your build is pretty squishy, you know? Um, uh, Postal 20 uh, skill stuff. Yes. Okay. So there's, there is this, yeah, there's this point where your skills hit, your skills hit 20 and you're like, um, your skills hit 20 and you're like, well, uh, that's, I, I'm kind of like done with this system. I don't need to actually go in here uh, and look at this stuff anymore because I'm like picked up my skills and that's there. And I can just kind of ignore it. It's done. And you kind of you kind of walk away from the system on your character unless unless you're changing your build up, uh, which which does happen and, and is is great for that. But um, if you go through, you level you level all the way through and you um, you pick all your stuff up and you get to the end game when you decide not to change it. That's your build and you're done. And, and this whole system kind of vanishes. It, it kind of just disappears because you've got your skills. They do what they do and you don't have to touch it anymore. Um, passives, you still, you still get a drip feed until hundred. So there's that like from, 
55 ish, 60 ish, around 60, I think is where it stops. Um, 62, maybe it's a little later, maybe it's like 75. But, anyways, in, the, in those last, let's say, last 25 skills uh, levels, you are still getting passive points. So, this system doesn't vanish. Um, and this is something that we've been looking at and considering and debating and all sorts of stuff on, on what's going to happen with it. So, there is this, um, there's this kind of this hole in. Um, in your build crafting and build uh, development experience where you you you, you miss uh, your character there's, there's, there's this hole in your character progression um, where skills as part of that character development and exploration disappear from view and you, you get you get a little bit of a resurgence when you start getting items like this like plus three Valkyrie great I have a few more skills I can toss in um, and we've been really careful with the total number of plus skills you can get on any given skill based on the um the, the percentage of points you can invest in an overall tree there needs to be points in the tree that you're not going to go to um so there's there's definitely this this gap in because 20 points happens pretty quick overall and i think there's this there's this Gap. I'm really dancing around this question. I, I'm struggling to answer it properly. <laughs> um, I think there's this gap in uh, like gap. There's this fall off with your skills where we still want them to be part of that leveling process, that experience, that gameplay experience. As you make your way through the Monolith of Fate, as you make your way through dungeons, as you make your way through the Pinnacle system, still having your skills, um, having opportunities to evolve past that point is important to us. And is something that we're going to continue to look into to find a way to do that nicely. Um. Yeah, so um, this is pretty much what, all he said about it. But basically, without confirming it, he confirmed that there will be something after level 20 for the skills. Maybe they just add more points to it. and But then they would really have to do, as he said, this doesn't really work that way. Uh, because then you really have to add also more notes to the skills. I don't know what they will be doing exactly. Maybe you can add something to the notes themselves or something, or you get items that sort of play with that more. I don't know, but there is definitely something coming. Probably not with 1.1, I think. I think later he says it's not coming with, with the next patch, um, but later. But definitely something after level 20. But it's true. As he said, you get to level 60 or 70 with your, with your character, then you've, you have all your skills on 20, and then you're just done with it. You just play your skills and you just grind the echoes and that's that's it right and that's a there's a really engagement gap as he said this is a nice term because that's what it is you, you sort of lose the system it completely vanishes so that they're putting something into that whatever it will be is great because then you actually after 20 you can still sort of play around with the skills whatever it might be and most likely not just more more points as he said because um yeah, otherwise, if you like, if the skills go to 30, you can just put points in literally every node in the tree. And that is just OP, right? As it is right now. So they would have to add more nodes to the trees, to 130 trees or how many it ever are. So that's probably not going to happen as well. Also, another thing that was interesting there, because you just said you're going to go through the Echoes or Monitor Fate, you're going to go through the dungeon and through the Pinnacle Boss System. So this puts the Pinnacle Boss System sort of into an, like he named it together with the Monoliths of Fate and the dungeons. And then you have the boss system. So this tells me that this is actually quite a lot of content. A lot of things you can go through. Even if it's just in the, the size of the three dungeons, that's still a lot, isn't it? Uh, from size-wise. Uh, it's not going to be like the monolith because that's a lot of endgame. But it's technically another endgame thing you can play other than the dungeons, the monoliths, uh, arena, for example, and then the pinnacle boss system. So that sounds cool. There is a lot, a lot coming with this. And I, I like this a lot. They're, they're working on a lot of great things to keep the game engaging throughout the campaign or like throughout the gameplay up to 100. And they are aware of all these things. That's great to know that the devs are actually aware of the things uh, people want. Because most of the times when someone asks a question on the Q&A streams, they're like, or oh, he's like, oh yeah, we are aware of that. We're working on it, but it's not coming now. So that's great. They are at least aware of most of these things. And you can just tell they are gamers themselves. They really are passionate for this game. And they play it a lot themselves, right? So they actually realize what is going on by playing it themselves. There was also one more key thing I just wanted to mention briefly. I, I couldn't find it right now in, in the stream. Somewhere in these two hours he mentioned 
that they have been actually secretly in the background working on the inflation on the Merchants Guild. I guess basically by buying up things um, or selling them for cheaper, so they, so they drop the prices intentionally with the unlimited gold they have. They didn't do it in a big way, but they said some might have noticed, or he said some might have noticed it, some, or maybe you didn't, but they are trying to bring the inflation down in the Merchants Guild from all the items, and they're doing this sort of on the side all the time. So that's interesting for you guys, anyone who is in the Merchants Guild. I don't like it personally. I'm more of a um, prophecies guy, but that's interesting for anyone in the Merchants Guild. The prices will come down. They are working on that. So it's not this super inflated thing we have right now. Anyway, that was it for today. I hope you enjoyed that. Tell me in the comments what you think of the ideas he, he put there and what, what he said. Um, do you like where this is going? Did you expect more from 1.1? We don't know all details yet, but also they said, um, or he said rather, one to two months from now, it will be coming out, the new uh, patch. And usually there is a build-up before where, with some leaks and some some trailers and stuff with the new things to get people back in. So um, we will get more in the future, but until now, this is really the only info we have. But definitely we got to check out next week's stream, so make sure to like and subscribe so you'll get next week when they actually are... He said he's going to leak something. Uh, we tried to call him out on it, that he actually leaks some, some new information, maybe about the Pinnacle Ball system or whatever. Yeah, hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments what you think of it, and I will see you in the next video.